Support for the Capital Connection comes from United University Professions, representing 37,000 academic and professional employees at SUNY campuses and teaching hospitals across New York State. Frederick E. Cole, President, UUPinfo.org. And New York State United Teachers, representing professionals in education and healthcare, online at nysut.org. It's the Capital Connection. Hi, I'm Alan Chartok. Joining us this week is Gerard Jerry Kassar, chairman of the Conservative Party in New York. You can find out more at cpnys.org. That's cpnys.org. Jerry, welcome back. Well, thank you. I mean, I've had uh, wonderful opportunities to discuss statewide issues with you on a number of occasions, and uh, I look forward to another uh, occasion right now. Thanks. And that's what you're going to get, like it or not. Okay, let's do midterm elections. Your reaction, Republicans did better than expected in blue state New York. How come that was? Well, I think I think a lot of it had to do uh, with the fact that we had Lee Zeldin on the top of the ticket, uh, a ca- ca- charismatic, energetic candidate. I think also, unfortunately for the people of the state of New York, the Democratic Party and their mishandling of crime issues and, frankly, not a very impressive handling of economic issues uh, – gave a lot of voters pause, or a desire, particularly independent voters, to look for uh, alternatives, to look for uh, different, uh, uh, you know, elected officials. Um, the end result being that we now have 11 Republican conservative Congress members, and we picked up, it looks like, five seats in the state assembly, and there was a, you know, a small net gain. It looks like it's only one seat in the state Senate. But, you know, I mean, from my, my perspective, these are all – we're moving in the right direction. I mean, we went from 36 percent of the statewide vote uh, four years ago on governor's race to 47 percent this year. So I was um, – I think uh, – I wouldn't say it was, uh, you know, a tidal way, but I would definitely yeah. say uh, the tide came up in New York. We are talking to Jerry Kassar, chairman of the Conservative Party in New York. Now, Jerry – you endorsed candidate Lee Zeldin, uh, yep. who narrowly lost to New York Governor Kathy Hochul in November. Now, yep. after saying he was, quote, seriously considering, unquote, a bid for Republican National Committee chair, outgoing Long Island Congressman Lee Zeldin will not run to replace current chair Ronna McDaniel. In a statement, Zeldin signaled he does not have enough support to topple McDaniel. Was it a mistake to endorse Zeldin when he saw voters in the midterms distance themselves from former President Trump's endorsed candidates who lost their races? Well, I mean, I think in the case of Lee Zeldin, he showed that he could increase the statewide GOP vote by 30 percent over a couple of years ago. And as such, prove that a Republican conservative can heavily contest a New York state election and get elected. When you get as close as he got, it, it, you know, the next step is just you win. And a lot came in with him. As far as that national race is concerned, it's 168 voting members, three from each state, plus uh, uh, the Virgin Islands, uh, Puerto Rico, and Guam. I think it works out to 168 total votes cast. It's a limited audience, and... Um, Usually the incumbents in situations like that have certain advantages because, frankly, they can uh, dish out different perks to that small group. But it does appear that she is going to be receiving a very strong challenge from the California National Committee woman 
And I would not at all be surprised if Lee Zeldin continues to be a player in that process. A lot of people respect him on a national level and want to listen to what he has to say without him actually going for the position. I think Lee Zeldin represents a very positive aspect on a national level for the Republican Party because he showed how in the deepest of blue states you can turn it to a more purplish or reddish color. I want to read you something from the Conservative Party website. Tolls and fares on the rise. New York State's three largest authorities, Thruway Authority, Port Authority, yep. and the MTA are all planning to raise tolls and fares in 2023. In the case yep. of the MTA, they're looking at significant fare increases above the increases already scheduled. It is no accident that these authorities operate outside of direct taxpayer control. Yes. How so? Well, because the legislature years ago, with the consent of the governors, different governors have have wanted to create this buffer so that they're not going to be held responsible for what are exceptionally unpopular items. In the case of the MTA, I mean, they'll use they'll use the the um, they'll accurately talk about reductions in um, in ridership due to the pandemic, but they really do not want to discuss the fact that when the pandemic ended. Uh, that they, in turn, could not provide a safe environment or a clean environment. To some degree, that is improving. But once people decide that they or come up with a different mechanism or manner to transport themselves in New York City or in the you know, New York City region, because this is the MTA region from Poughkeepsie through Long Island, you don't get them back. So, I mean, maybe the MTA needs to be looking at other ways of reducing cost instead of making the whole um, the whole experience more much more expensive, and let me just say this to you, um, if I if you don't mind, not at all. I am an individual who happens to use the subways, happens to go over Port Authority bridges, and happens to take the throughway a lot. I am really getting hit hard by all this now. Hey, it's, it's you know it's not it's not going to put me on a poverty line, but I mean we we could be potentially talking in my case quite a bit of extra money annually, and I am not the only person in this boat. So when you see the fares go up, or when you see the cost go up, is there anything you can do? Well, I think we have to. Oh, you mean it's the conservative party? We yeah. uh, clearly are talking with our our legislators. I've actually had conversations with people like Congressman Maliotakis. Senator Tedesco, a couple of the assembly members and leaders. Um, I mean, I, I think I think the public needs to clearly understand that there are uh, there are uh, governmental representatives who absolutely oppose what is about to happen here. And and to your point, how come no? It's very difficult to hold anybody responsible, and um, that's just wrong. And it's I think the people of New York showed an interest in alternative views this past election cycle. Let's give them something else to think about. We are talking, of course, to Jerry Kassar, chairman of the Conservative Party in New York. You can find out more about him and the party at cpnys.org. So, Jerry, from the Conservative Party website, New York's Cannabis Control Board, eh, marijuana control, is failing job one to protect the public safety. How do you respond to it? No, I think it's true. Down in my community here, there are countless unregulated ones. There are individuals that just set up shop. They've been running these shops for a couple of months now, and the local police are beginning to respond. I, I you know, the, I mean, I, we did not support, uh, we did support recreational uh, marijuana, the Conservative Party. But I must say, if you're going to have it, 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 you need, you need to regulate it. And I will go further to say that my suspicion here is that. This is not going to stop the uh, the uh, individuals that go out and illegally uh, sell pot because they can just make a lot more money doing it that way as opposed to um, operating within this um, early failure of a system. I mean, this is not – you know, the, the way government seems to operate, Alan, is that they make the actual um, operations of, 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 you know, government entities a, something like a test – and you have to live through all their failings before they get it right. So how long are we going to have to live through this failing? How many years? Will they ever get it right? It's a real problem. So you are, of course, a conservative, right? I mean, you're not going to plead not guilty, are you? You're a conservative. No, I, I, I promise you I won't. <laughs> <laughs> so is New York State 
which has always been sort of a liberal blue state, yeah. is it in any way moving in your direction? Well, we feel it is based on what occurred um, in the last election cycle. Well, like I was indicating, I feel like it's not a blue state as much as it's uh, you know, a purplish type state right now. Um, I mean, you, you have to live in increments, but it, but here's what I think. And I've been, I actually just said this a little while ago to someone on the, I was talking to, it is important that gains we made based on individuals perceptions of issues where we stand versus the democratic party, do we continue the press, whether it be crime, whether it be taxes, whether it be just personal responsibility, we need to press. And in, uh, Ethnic communities such as the Russians and Asian communities in New York City, particularly with the Asian community, which is just overwhelmed with this, this, these horrible hate crimes against them and are beginning to desert the Democratic Party in some real numbers, it is important that it is understood that this is not a temporary reaction from Republicans and conservatives. This is where we are in terms of our relationships with these um, – they're more than emerging communities – with these – strong ethnic communities that have developed down in the city and that they have they have not just friends that they will be part of the process going forward with our political parties ah. so let's talk a little bit more about marijuana if we may there are those who really think hey you know by the way you're talking to somebody who has never experienced smoking marijuana in his life uh, yeah. So neither have I, although I must say, walking along streets in Brooklyn right now, I sometimes feel— You can get I, high I just walking feel, there. Yeah. Well, let me just tell you this as a separate story. I was at the debate with Lee Zeldin over at Pace University, and I got there a little early, and in the blocks around Pace University, there are uh, some dorm-type situations, and there are large groups of young people gathered in different places. I mean, there were clouds of pot. Now, as it turns out, I went to Pace University, and I remember in the days, which is long, long ago when I went there, there were issues like this in, in, you know, in, fire, in hallways, firewells, you know. But to actually have a problem walking down a street because it was such a heavy cloud of uh, pot smoke, and I do not believe that's right. I absolutely believe that I should be protected from having to walk through clouds of pot smoke. But wait, and, wait, 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 wait. You know, Did you smoke pot? No. Never? Ever? Never, really, seriously, never. Wow. Okay. I never did either, but uh, a lot I'm of not, I'm not a smoker. I'm not a smoker of cigarettes either. But, I mean, the thing is that, the thing is that I never, <laughs> when I went to Pace, I knew you didn't go up and down the steps. You took the elevator because you didn't want to deal with the, the clouds in, the, in those areas. Now I've got to experience it on the streets all the time. And look. I'm a guy in his early 60s. How about the individuals walking with their children? This is ridiculous. Now, there are upsides of legalizing marijuana, I think. It creates jobs. It brings in revenue for the state. It also gives small farmers a chance to grow a crop that they, well, frankly, they can sell. I mean, government has to make a distinction and uh, decisions based on a prioritization of how they want to bring in resources and the counter-prevailing arguments. And my particular view is that in the case of pot and marijuana, you know, there could have been an argument made for uh, medical. Um, I'm not, you know, this conversation is about recreational, and I do think that the countervailing arguments on recreational pot are substantial. Okay, let's see. I see both Speaker Carl Hasty and Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart Cousins were reelected to the leadership posts, yeah. including the governor, Kathy Hochul. That means the Democrats are in charge. You say one party rule in Albany means lack of oversight. In what way? How do you how do you get Republicans uh, back in power in the legislature? Do you need to well, take more centrist positions on the issues? You know, you're well, making you're groaning, but I want to know whether or not, you know, <laughs> you have a plan. Well, let's go back first to what you first said in terms of a one party rule. So what does one party rule give you? It gives you an attorney general who does not in, who who go who investigates herself. And then when the public calls or Republicans call for additional investigations, now that it's out in the open, the governor comes back and says, no, we're not going to investigate. So really right there you can see of almost a formalization of an inability of New York State's democratically controlled government to adequately review uh, uh, unethical, illegal, corrupt behavior in, uh, in the attorney general's office. As far as the as far as uh, uh, issues are concerned, 
you know, you don't really – right now, you don't really have to be so centralist as just simply to indicate that on crime and on, on taxes and on, um, you know, issues that could be job-killing type issues – that New York State continues to go in the wrong direction. I, I believe, basically, that 47% of the people of the state of New York have indicated that, um, that they do not agree with the state government. The fact that politically we were not able to even capitalize on it even more is more of a failure of the political parties, including mine, versus a, a, a failure of oppositions on issues. Possibly candidate selection could have been somewhat better, although we had good candidate selection. Maybe it could have been better. But possibly, you know, our campaign mechanisms could have been more efficient, but we did have a lot of victories. And the congressional elections, you know, as I've indicated, 42 percent of the people of the state voted to elect uh, Republicans, conservatives. And if you throw Colin Schmidt in, who just barely lost, the number really works out to almost 50 percent. Yeah, we don't count almost. No, I, I well, I didn't do it horse racing, right? <laughs> no. No, I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, Hakeem Jeffries has been elected the Democratic House yep. leader. And you, Cherry, say that the senior Democratic House leadership might have moved from the West Coast to the East Coast, but do not expect any differences in political stewardship as San Francisco's Nancy Pelosi leaves the stage. Yep. And Brooklyn's Hakeem Jeffrey ascends to minority leader. Expect many of the same failed Democratic ideas to emerge from their conference, you say. The main difference will be that, as the minority party, the likelihood that we will see a repeat of the gigantic spending and tax increases of the past two years repeat themselves is zero, you say. Well, I think that's true. I think, um, I think. I mean, I said it. I believe it. I, yeah. I believe that... Um, that um, divided government is actually good government. I mean, uh, you know, I'm mean, not necessarily. I mean, I'm not in a situation where we're about to take full control over anything. But I am. I do believe that the public benefits from divided government because less actually happens. And I'm not a big believer in government successfully doing most anything. So in this particular case, I mean, uh, Hakeem. You know, it's interesting that both the uh, minority leader and the majority leader of the Senate. Not only both be from New York State, they're both from Brooklyn. I mean, I live, I live, I live within a, 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 you know, a mile and a half of Schumer, and probably within two miles of, of Hakeem. But the thing here is that um, Hakeem was part of leadership uh, going into this new new uh, congr- Congress, and he will reflect um, a lot of the current views, except with possibly an East Coast flair to it. Now, the Conservative Party supports term limits for the governor, lieutenant yep. governor, controller, yep. attorney general, and members of the Senate and Assembly, and yep. the first passage of a constitutional amendment establishing yep. initiative and referendum and recall. What are the chances? Yep. Come on now. I want to well, straight I would think out. They're, I would think they're, they're fairly low. Well, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Say that <laughs> I again. think they're really low, but it doesn't mean – I mean, the Conservative Party is, um, has established itself as an alternative voice. Um, the only way we can win on some of these is to elect more individuals to office, and we um, do like to propel our views and let individuals understand that, you know, this is these are these are issue questions we're asking candidates when we interview them. And um, you know, look, I, some people would uh, agree with me, some people would not, but I like to believe that when we do an endorsement, we've given something of a good housekeeping seal of approval based on the issues that the party. Um, you know, speaks about the conservative party. Your party wants agencies to hold to federal law enforcement officials any person in our state illegally and prohibit any state or municipal or municipality and prohibit any state or municipality from becoming a sanctuary government. What do you mean right. by that? Can you put a face on this? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, sanctuary governments essentially involve uh, ignoring federal law relating to illegal immigration. Now, I mean, I think, the, I think the leadership of the party strongly believes that this is an issue that needs to be dealt with on a federal level, and that which, which all parties have failed to address properly on a federal issue. But short of that, um, we're very uncomfortable with local governments establishing frameworks that just simply ignore a federal law. The Conservative Party is made up of many, many uh, individuals who can trace their 
recent roots to immigrants. I mean, my grandparents were all immigrants, um, and I and I think it's 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 a it's a falsehood for anyone to believe that conservatives have any issue whatsoever with lively uh, immigration. Uh, but I do think at the same time that we believe these laws were put in place for a reason and sanctuary cities are some sort of excuse by local governments to simply ignore those laws. Now, just so everybody is caught up to date, in case you're joining us a little later, we are talking with Jerry Kassar, chairman of the Conservative Party in New York. And you can find out more about the Conservative Party at cpnys.org. Okay, so, Jerry, the Conservative Party continues to oppose any effort to provide free college education. And I have to say, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I went to Hunter College, didn't pay 20 cents for my time there. And while you're, you, while you're opposing any effort to provide free college education, you acknowledge the cost of higher education is far too expensive. Free community college or universities is even more costly to taxpayers. Therefore, all levels of higher education should be made available online to lower the cost. Well, I mean, I, I did go to, I mentioned I went to Pace. I went there on well, a Well, Pace is a private college. Uh, well, no, no, I went, I went there on a significant scholarship. Still actually, a private so, college. I mean, I, yeah, so, and there are, and, you know, now they've extended the TAP benefits into, which are not necessarily that significant, into the private colleges. One of my, I have multiple, uh, multiple issues with the, uh, the, the free state university educations. One, I think it is just incredibly expensive to the taxpayers. Uh, two, I think it actually does harm to the, to the extraordinarily well-regarded private uh, college uh, situation within New York State. You know, clearly an individual will look to go to a public uh, institution versus a, a private one. Additionally, New York State had done a great, um, had done, had pro- provided various uh, financial benefits so that you could afford to go to what was a less expense. At, at, when, when SUNY and CUNY charged just tuitions to most anybody, those tuitions were actually fairly low. And in addition, those tuitions also, whether it be TAP whether it, or whether it be um, you know, financial aid that was available, really resulted in very few people having any very few young people having any restriction from getting into these colleges. How do you know they, that? How do you know that? Well, I do. I mean, I, I believe because there was it was it was so inexpensive. I mean, you could clearly go to a state university. Hey, there are under, some people, Jerry. There are some people who, uh, you know, who five hundred dollars would be prohibitive. But, they, but that's where they had all sorts of financial relief programs. What you ended up doing here was you, they created a blanket. And it just struck me that um, Andrew Cuomo and then uh, Governor Hochul created this blanket for simple purposes of providing themselves with additional political leverage. It's just to me was to me and I think to the conservative movement, it was a bad umbrella to create such a giveaway. Um, in my in my view, and plus to be quite blunt about it, everyone does not need to go through life going to a college. So let let responsibility require that you look at this from a you know a little different perspective than I think the liberal leaders of our state wanted to look at it from. Well, Jerry, um, let me ask you this: We believe that any attempt to amend the human rights law to include transgender language as a special class of citizen should be rejected. That's your right. position. Yes, that's right. Don't transgender people just want to be accepted as equals? They're not asking to be put in a special. Class, we, uh, I mean, I think I think it's a civil rights issue that is debatable. I think that's quite debatable. I don't think anybody should be unfairly treated, but I think that is a, a debatable point, and I hear that point from many of my friends. Who happen to be a gay or lesbian, and I, you know, and I never, I've never really bought into that particular point. Now, I do believe there are protections out there for anyone, and those protections, uh, you know, need to be enforced. But creating these additional categories, to me, you know, you might say extending the number of letters in a, in terms of uh, the descriptions, 
is um, not appropriate. That would be um, my party's view and my view. Okay. Another priority is that you guys have is for school districts that decide to permit uh, school personnel to have access to firearms should be provided training and support by state and local law enforcement. Should we have guns in schools at all? We should have options available, uh, and with the with local uh, school districts making those decisions. I mean, when, you know, where I live in the city, you know, there's a certain view of anything involving guns. And frankly, the view here would be that just eliminate guns from everyone, which is, you know, constitutionally protected. I think in different parts of the state, you have different views. And that should be something that is more confined to local governments, local school districts to make decisions on such on such policies. We've been talking to Jerry Kassar. Gerard, Jerry Kassar, chairman of the Conservative Party of New York. You can find out more at cpnys.org. Jerry, thank you so much for being our guest on this show because we want to make sure that everybody hears, you know, all sides of every argument. And we are so pleased that you continue to come back on. I very much look forward to the opportunity. As always, thank you. Connection is a production of WAMC Northeast Public Radio. For copies, call 1 800 323 9262 or visit us online anytime at WAMC.org or just schedule a podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. And join us again next week at this same time for another political conversation. Thanks for listening.